Here's the documentary on Ibrahim Traore, the youngest currently serving president in the world. So, who exactly is Ibrahim Traore and how did he swiftly ascend to power? Ibrahim Traore was born in 1988 in Kara, a small town in Bondaqui, located in the Muhaun province, Burkina Faso. After graduating from high school, Ibrahim Traore headed to the capital of Burkina Faso, Ouagadougou, to pursue higher education. He enrolled at the University of Ouagadougou, focusing on geology. During his time on campus, he developed an interest in leadership and became involved in various student groups, including the Association of Muslim Students and ANEB. Ibrahim was highly active in these organizations and eventually rose to a leadership position. Known for his outspokenness, he consistently advocated for the well-being of his fellow comrades and skillfully defended them in times of disputes. After completing university, Traore displayed no interest in pursuing a career in geology. But instead, he opted to join the country's army, maybe out of passion to lead and fight for his nation. Traore enlisted in the Burkina Faso Army in 2009 and eventually graduated from the Georges Nemono Military Academy. Due to his exemplary performance, he would later be sent to Morocco where he underwent additional military training in, focusing on anti-aircraft training, before being reassigned to an infantry unit in Kaya, a town in the northern region of Burkina Faso. His superiors quickly recognized his outstanding performance in his duties, and in 2014, he was promoted to the rank of lieutenant. Things still moved swiftly for Traore as, in the same year, he joined Minisma, a United Nations peacekeeping force involved in the Mali War. In 2018, he was acknowledged as one of the Minisma soldiers who displayed courage during significant rebel attacks in the Tombukta region. Afterward, he returned to Burkina Faso, where he contributed to operations against the escalating jihadist insurgency. Traore participated in the Otapunu Offensive of 2019 in Jibo and took part in several other counterinsurgency operations in the northern part of the country. A genuinely dedicated and patriotic military individual, in my opinion. In the midst of these wars, he gained a lot of experience and sharpened his leadership skills, which eventually led to his promotion to the rank of captain in the year 2020. However, when he assumed this leadership role, he began to realize that things at the top were not as he had imagined would look like. He witnessed clear instances of bribery among politicians and also noticed a lack of support for the military personnel on the ground, both in terms of their salaries and the essential military equipment they needed. Traore, now disillusioned, took the role of the spokesperson for frustrated soldiers stationed in the north who also shared his frustrations with the government. But how was the leadership of Burkina Faso like before the military coups? Well, Burkina Faso was under the leadership of Rockmark Christian Caboret as the president until his disposal by the military in January 2022. Christian Cabor had himself taken over from President Blaise Compare. Compare seized power in a coup after the assassination of Thomas Sankara in 1987. Interestingly, Compare was a close associate of Sankara, but that's another long tale for another day. It has been said that Traore was part of the group of army officers that supported the January 2022 Burkina Faso coup d'etat that removed Christian Cabor and brought in the patriotic movement for safeguard and restoration military junta. The army installed Paul Henri Sandogo Damaba as the leader. And from March 2022, Ibrahim Traore was given a role to serve as the head of an artillery regiment in Kaya. However, things would take a turn sooner than expected. Many supporters of the January coup became dissatisfied with the performance of Paul Henri Sandogo Damaba, the junta's leader, regarding his inability to contain the jihadist insurgency. The dissatisfaction about the situation was highest among younger officers who fought against the rebels at the front lines. They also claimed payment delays especially for the Cobra troops. Traore made a decision to travel back to the capital city, Ouagadougou, to request an immediate meeting with Sandogo Damaba, but his request was declined. 
Feeling let down, Traore ultimately chose to overthrow Damaba because he believed that Damaba's ambitions were straying away from what they had set out to do as a team. When the coup plotters initiated their takeover on September 30th, Traore was still a captain. The coup also received formidable backing from the Cobra unit. Right after the coup, Traore proclaimed himself the new leader of the patriotic movement for safeguard and restoration. On October 6th, he also took on the role of interim president, holding the titles of head of state and supreme commander of the armed forces. At first, Traore promised to arrange democratic elections in July 2024, but his statement would shift, as we'll see shortly. While serving as president, Traore has stuck to his mysterious and highly formal demeanor, a reputation he had already established before assuming power. He has maintained strict control over his communication, making a deliberate effort to portray himself as a capable wartime leader, perhaps aiming to steer clear of the unfavorable public image that plagued those who came before him. Ibrahim Traore has set a primary goal to combat imperialism in his country. In February 2023, the government of Traoré in Burkina Faso expelled French forces that were aiding in the fight against local insurgents. Then, in September 2023, Burkina Faso's military junta ordered the French embassy's defense attaché to depart the country, citing subversive actions. Ibrahim Traoré expressed a desire to explore new partnerships, relationships that he hopes are mutually beneficial. Shortly after, Traoré's government voiced support for the idea of a federation with Mali and extended an invitation to Guinea. All three countries are currently under military leadership and as a union, they declared that an attack on one nation would be considered an attack on all of them. In April 2023, he announced a general mobilization of the population to support the military as rebel forces escalated their attacks. Traore publicly committed to reclaiming all areas held by rebels and made it clear that there would be no negotiations until the insurgency significantly weakened. The following month, Traore surprised many who expected earlier elections by expressing doubt about the planned restoration of democracy in 2024. He explicitly stated that elections couldn't happen unless the insurgents were pushed back and the security situation improved. On September 26, 2023, dissatisfied elements within the military unsuccessfully tried to overthrow Traore. Thanks to intelligence gathered by a government agency, Traore was able to thwart the coup attempt against him in good time. Traore has been cozying up with Russia and at some point was accused of having a connection with Russian mercenary organization Wagner Group. The Ghanaian government openly accused Traore of teaming up with the Wagner Group after the coup, bringing in mercenaries to fight against jihadist rebels. Traore, on the other hand, denies this, stating that our Wagner are the VDP referring to the volunteers for the defense of the homeland, but in all this, the people in Burkina Faso are warming up to the idea of partnering with Russia. Supporters even waved the Russian flag as Traore entered Ouagadougou, the nation's capital, at one point. On July 29, 2023, after the 2023 Russia-Africa summit, Traore stated that his country's people are backing Russia. He also announced the decision to reopen the Russian embassy, which had been closed since 1992. Additionally, the president has signed an agreement with Russian President Putin to build a nuclear energy plant in Burkina Faso. The new president has a tough challenge ahead when it comes to regaining control from jihadist groups. Some of these groups are linked to Al-Qaeda while others are associated with the Islamic State. These groups have been steadily making progress since they initiated their attacks from Mali back in 2015.